in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of our, this program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub nub seven. I am your soul brother. Number one, I want to thank you so much for joining us this uh, early Sunday morning. I was supposed to do this video live stream yesterday, but due to technical difficulties, I couldn't uh, get that together. So we decided to... Uh, try again this morning I don't know uh, what the deal is sometimes it's the computer it might be the router I, I don't know but uh, I guess time we will figure it out regardless we're here right now and I want to get into our conversation this morning it's always an honor for me that you would share your time with us because you could be doing something else. You could be in church. You could be at the mosque. You could be at the synagogue. You could be on the corner getting, getting high and drunk this morning. There's a lot of things that you could be doing, but instead you decided to give us an opportunity to share our word it's not the word of God. <laughs> it's not the word of God. It's, it's not the word of Satan. It is the word coming from my personal self, inspired by my life experience, inspired by the history that I have been taught, inspired by the struggle of those who came before me. So now that the baton has been passed to me, I feel there's a responsibility for me to do something just like those prior to myself did something for me so that I can live better. I don't have to worry and I never worry about what they call those guys. They put the sheets on and they ride, ghost riders, or whatever they used to call them back in the day. I don't have to, we don't worry about folks like that on a horse burning crosses in our yard. We don't worry about getting lynched. I know there are stories that even in today's modern time, some of us, we end up lynched, but we don't worry about that. We can vote if we want to. We get drunk anytime we feel like it. We call ourselves the N-word, but you don't have to worry about somebody running around calling us the N-word because they could go to jail, to, uh, they could lose their job, things of this nature. So, Somebody out there done something to make my life better. And as an adult, when you have children, it is your responsibility to make their walk easier than your walk was. It's your responsibility to help them be better than you. This is why the focus of our ancestors was on education because they were denied education they were illiterate and the more illiterate you are or the more ignorant you are the easier it is for other people to take advantage of you so their focus for their children I don't want you to be illiterate you need to learn how to read and write 
That was their focus. Because I want you to be better than me. In our time, we should want to be our children to be better than us. But we're going backwards. Our ancestors was fighting to ride in front of the bus and our children go straight to the back of the bus. They have no interest to advance the people or the race. You cannot advance the race by getting drunk, being a drug addict, a whoremonger, a twerker. You can't do that. We have to become a better people as we progress, but we're not becoming better. We're going backwards. And if you're not careful, you're going to find yourself on a slave plantation. I know many of you can't believe that. There's a lot of things people don't believe. The Jewish people was told, you better get out of Germany. These people plan on killing you. Oh, I don't believe that. This is my country. I fought for this country. Many of the Jewish people said, I don't know. I'm not going to take the chance. They packed up and left Germany. And within a few years, those who did not believe it was in gas ovens. That's where they were. We don't know what might happen in the world. You find yourself on a plantation, but maybe that's a good thing because your mentality, your mindset is still on the slave plantation. Oh, you drive fancy cars and you, and you buy high priced liquor and you got fancy jobs and degrees, but your mind is still a slave. So to put you back on the slave plantation, you go right back. Like they said, where, where, where I, I assume that you belong. But that is not the dream. That was not the intent of your ancestors. Instead of grasping this baton to go forward, you decide I'm going to go backwards. And you do it with a smile on your face. We have no respect for education. We have no respect for this. We have no, we make mockery of those who are able to think. I'm not talking about regurgitate information. I'm not talking about intellectual masturbation. I'm talking about those of us who can think. All over this country, we go in the church, go into the mosque and go into the synagogue so you can regurgitate. Most of these people have not really read the Bible. They have not read the Quran. They regurgitate and they masturbate. And they pick and choose what they like and what they don't like. What they don't like, you don't hear them regurgitate. They only concentrate on that which feeds the narrative that they want to sell. Because they have not really read the Bible. They have not really read the Quran. And people called atheists have really read the Quran have really read the Bible and they show us disturbing things in these books, contradictory things, profane, violent things in these books. Why don't you talk about them? Because you have not really read the Bible. You have not read the Quran. So our message to begin our talk today, what if you're going to believe in that, read it. Don't regurgitate and parrot something that you heard from the pastor and the rabbi, the preacher. Read it for yourself. You're not reading it for yourself. They only study only enough to prepare for this narrative that they want to sell. If you're going to tell a story, 
tell the whole story. And that's what they don't like about this ministry. If I'm going to tell the story, I'm going to tell the whole story. Whether it makes me look good or whether it makes me look bad, we want to see, we want to hear the real truth, the whole thing. Read it. I want to welcome those in the chat room. I want to welcome those in the skies listening to us this after, after this afternoon, <laughs> this morning. Uh, shout out to my nephew out there. Welcome my nephew to our, our broadcast. Thank you so much for participating and commenting. I hope that you stay with us as long as you can and continue to comment and participate in this morning's live stream. We want to talk about all the subject matter today, this morning. We want to speak about the upcoming rally for reparations. I believe it's going to be held again in Washington, D.C., somewhere on the plaza. And this effort is led by our brother Tariq Nasheed and those who call themselves foundational black Americans. And I understand this identity called foundational black Americans, but for me, as you know, I prefer soul brothers and sisters. I prefer it because its origins really is unknown. And nobody can claim uh, me. I, I'm the one that started. Because when we, we do that, the person, you because it's an ego trip situation. I even heard that Tariq Nasheed talking about uh, getting a copyright on foundation of black America. How are you going to copyright a people, man? <laughs> That's just like saying white folks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a copyright. You know, I, I created white folks and I'm going to get... If that's what the people are, that's what they are. You, there's no one person that can copyright and patent talk about you can't use. So I'm a, I'm a foundation of black American and I cannot even use it because Tariq Nasheed patented and I cannot use that title. I cannot use that label because it, it belongs to Tariq Nasheed. That don't make any sense. If I'm a foundation of black American, whether I like it or not, that's what I am. That's not something that you can patent. That's not something that one person can say, this is, I, I, I own this. Well, I don't want your foundation of black America. So I say soul brothers and sisters here because it was here before I was even born. I don't know the origins. I build upon the identity. I build upon soul brothers and sisters. It was there when we was calling ourselves black. Black was given more attention, but soul brothers and sisters, soul, the people of soul, was right there with being, I'm proud and I'm black. I'm black and I'm proud. It was right there, I know, because I was raised in it. These are the funky divas of soul. It was part of us. And nobody can say, I invented that. That's mine. Because that's who, what we are. Just like at one time, we was called Negro. We was called color. There's nobody that can, even the Caucasian people, even though, of course, you know it came from them, there was no one person that said uh, that I, I, I'm the one, you can't call yourself a Negro, I own this. So we have a problem right off the bat. Nobody can own and copyright an identity of a people. 
I embrace soul brothers and sisters because it came from our people. It's the only label that came from us. Black did not come from us. So when you say foundation of black American, black did not come from us. We didn't, that's not us. We was called that by somebody else and we embraced it and made it our own, but it did not come from us. This thing called soul, I'm very sure it had spiritual religious origin, but it went beyond that. It's more than that. Because a dance is not spiritual, music and a lot of the things, food is not spiritual, you can call it that, but that's not what we, we were, exactly. Rick James, Richard Pryor, soul brothers and sisters. That's what we was. That's what we called ourselves. When I was growing up, when I was a little boy, they say, give me five. On the black hand side. We slapping that side, you know. This. Well, anyway, I'm not going to get technical on that. I might get screwed up on it. Anyway, that's what we used to do. Give me five. On the black hand side. In the hole. You got soul. And I passed that down. And it was a fun game for the little children. Soul takes you out of the sick game of race. So you don't have to worry about your skin color. Only about your tribe. Your people where you come from. You don't have to worry about, am I too black? Am I too light? Only you have to know and embrace your background where you come from. You proud of who you are, not because of your skin color, not because of melanin, not because your skin makes vitamin D in the sun and all this nonsense. I'm proud because of simply who I am and where my people come from. I stand on their shoulders. I stand on their strength. I'm not saying that foundation of black American isn't a good name. I'm saying that soul is a better name. That's what I'm saying. And I'm sure if it was given a vote to the people, they would embrace it because it's already here and it's been with us for a long, long time. And there was an effort to destroy it. Before we embrace it the way I'm bringing it to us today. So I can say and stand up for us. But they cannot call me a racist because I never say nothing about black or white. The Honorable Neely Fuller Jr., Many of these blackly black type of folks, they will quote a little of him, but they really don't, they really don't promote Neely Fuller Jr. because he does not, he does not push blackness. And Neely Fuller Jr. says, I don't need to do that. I know I'm black every day. Why do I have to talk about it every day? What you got to, you got to remind yourself that you're black, that you're melanated. I don't need to do that. I'm concentrating on the problem. The problem is racism. The problem is not me being black. The problem is living in a racist society, learning how to deal with racism. That's your problem. Now, so we have no problem, and I see nothing wrong with foundational black America. I'm saying that getting your soul back is better. That's what I'm saying. On our last broadcast, it was brought to my attention a question about our vision 
called Operation Exodus Mississippi Campaign. It was brought to our attention that the issue of Native Americans, what are we going to do about that? I want to make something perfectly clear. There was nothing wrong with that inquiry. There's nothing wrong with that question. I never thought about it. I was born in the state of Mississippi, and I traveled throughout the state of Mississippi. Even as a truck driver, I did not know anything about Native American reservation in the state of Mississippi. I never heard it talked about. So I did not know. So that makes me ignorant. I did not know. So a brother brought that to our attention. Shout out to our brother. I'm going to say Brother J26. Brother J26 brought that to our attention. Those of you that was watching that program, some may think that I was getting frustrated about the question. I'm just, I wasn't frustrated. I'm just curious, why would a black man why would you care and speak in behalf of Native American people? That, I, that's what I'm, I'm, that was mind-boggling to me. Why would, you, why would you care about Native American people and what's going to happen with them? But the question is valid. We should never, there's no question, there's no question that's silly, there's no question. This, this is how we learn. Because I did not know. So now I know. And to my, to my knowledge, again, I could be incorrect. The Choctaw Nation, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Choctaw Nation, Mississippi is not even originally where they come from. It was like a it was like a pit stop. They wanted to force them, as you know, on west. But they refused to keep going. So the government decided, okay, well, we'll let y'all sit here. And so they established themselves in the northern part of Mississippi, I believe. But I know going back and forth through Mississippi, I've never, when I go to Oklahoma and places like that, you see, as you go up and down the road, you see signs talking about the, uh, the various Native American reservations. I've never seen that. I didn't pay any attention as you went through the state of Mississippi that these uh, reservations uh, existed or not. But uh, even so, the Native Reservation, that's a federal issue. That's not a state issue. That's a treaty with the United States government. And no matter, I don't know what type of relationship the state of Mississippi has, which we will find out eventually, but I don't know what that relationship is with Native American people. Anyway, if they, since they are there, since they are here in the state of Mississippi, if we would take control of the state, they would benefit. But remember, the treaty, the treaty is <clears throat> with the United States government. And the United States government supersedes anything of the state. But that's an issue we would have to deal with once we did come in control of that state 
of which wouldn't be no problem because we're there not to harass nobody, not to put down nobody, but to elevate the state regardless to who is living in the state. Native Americans, Caucasian people, uh, the gay community don't make no difference. This is not a building a nation for yourself. There's no nation on this planet that's going to allow you to build some kind of nation within a nation. That's never going to happen. That, that has never happened nowhere. Not on their land. So this thing that the nation of Islam talk about, we are a nation within a No, you're not. You are a religious organization and your happy ass is going to stay a religious organization. If you got, if this government uh, had the idea that that's what you was planning, you was actually doing, they will stop that real quick. You're not doing that here. Take your happy ass, find your own land like we did. Regardless of how we got it, this is what we did. We left England, we left Great Britain, and we went and found our own. That's what your happy ass need to do. No Body is going to allow you. Now, you can have Chinatown and you can have Ethiopian town, Somali town, German town. You can have all the little towns and neighborhoods that you want, communities that you want. But you ain't going to bring Germany here. You ain't bringing Africa here. You ain't bringing China here. Got a problem. There's going to be no nation within a nation, not here. <laughs> so that's crazy. You're not going to have no Islamic Muslim nation here. Not while I live, not while I breathe. <laughs> Nonsense. But that's a nation of Islam selling point that they know is ridiculous. It's never going to happen. But when somebody asks you to believe, you will accept that. I'm building a nation within a nation. Not in the United States of America, you ain't. N not in Ghana. Not in Hong Kong. Not nowhere on this planet. Nobody's going to allow nobody to build some nation within a nation. You go out somewhere. Now, if you want to try to do something like that, they probably wouldn't mind take your happy ass into the desert. But you don't want to live in the desert. Go out in the desert. I heard the land is real cheap. And you can't live in the desert. You can go on Instagram. You can go on YouTube. People are moving out into the desert. You don't like white folks? You don't like how this could take your ass in, into the desert. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't mind. Land is cheap and everything. Go out there with the road runners. <laughs> And the coyote. And them and them damn diamondback rattlesnakes. <laughs> they wouldn't mind. Take, go out there. All you Negroes, that's a good idea. Hey, why don't you take that exodus out in the desert? <laughs> I'm not talking like that. I'm not going, I'm not going out in the desert, sir. <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. We will support Operation Exodus. Desert. <laughs> Take all your Negroes. Go out in the desert. No more palm trees. No more apple trees. Cactus. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You, you don't want to do that. Actually, in reality, you don't want to do anything. You you really like it just the way it is. Just stop kicking my ass the way you do. That's that's all. That's really. You you really like it the way it is. Just stop kicking my ass the, the way y'all been doing. Uh, like Michael said, you just leave me alone. Leave me alone. That's all you want. And see, most Negroes, foundational black Americans, uh, the Hebrew Israelites, black Muslims, whatever you want to call yourself, African American, the reality is, I don't care how you run your mouth. They're comfortable in this. Because if you wasn't comfortable, if we had to run out of... Look! I know what I'm saying is right because many Native American people 
ran to the swamp and learned how to live in the swamp because of the oppression of what the Caucasian people was putting on them. Some of the Native American people ran to the desert. If you so dissatisfied with America, then take your ass to the swamp, take your ass to the desert. But you can't drive a Mercedes Benz because that's what a lot of your YouTube personalities do. They drive these fancy pretty, you can't drive a pretty fancy car out in the damn sand in the damn swamp. You can't do that. You wanna you wanna be able to continue to live the way you the way you do. <laughs> Talking all that the white man is and you complain every day. You really you you really comfortable living how you live. That's the reality of it. Let's just let's be real. That's why you don't hear me on my live stream talk about how evil the United States is and blah, 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 blah. When you look at the choices that you have, I, I rather, I, okay, I'd I, I rather try to deal with this. Because <laughs> that's the reality of it. You just want to be treated with justice. You just want to be treated, treated fairly. But if you thought that this government and these people was really giving you the hell, like you put on these videos, you go out and search YouTube and Instagram, anything white folks done done, how they beat folks up, you plaster that stuff up. Okay, if, they, if it's so evil, take your ass to the desert. If it's so evil, take your ass to the swamp. If it's so wicked and devilish, take your ass to Africa. These folks ain't doing a damn thing except running their damn mouth. Going to Disneyland. They'll make a video talking about how evil white folks is. Pack up their family and go to Disneyland. And go worship a fake ass mouse. All praises due to Allah. With your Marcus Garvey ass. Let's just be real. That's why they don't like Angel Snup Nup 7. Because I'm just keeping it real. You're not real. I know that there are those who watch this program. I know that you're not going to do a damn thing. I'm just a preacher. Just like the other preachers. I, I like how Angel Snup Nup 7 talked. Tell them, Angel. I'm telling you to. But you don't care because it sounds good. We don't want to do nothing. Let's just keep it real. The only thing you want to do is go to church. The only thing you want to do is talk. That's all you want to do. You don't want to do nothing. You're comfortable in your pornography. You're comfortable in your liquor and your whoremonging and making all these babies that don't have a future because you ain't giving them no future. The white man giving them a future. You're not giving, giving them no future. The only thing you're doing is bringing them here so another people can take care of them. You're incapable of taking care of your own children. You talk about the white man, but if he took everything away from you, you wouldn't have nothing. You produce nothing. You can't even bring yourself a glass of water. And you you are a, a, a so-called adult and can't even bring yourself a glass of water. And come on YouTube, all this hollering and screaming and puffing your chest like you tough. All they have to do is cut your water off. We'll see how tough you are. Don't sell you no gas for your pretty car. See how tough you are. Look how they cry when they get off the internet. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. That's why they don't like me. Because I'm telling the truth. Tell your truth on your, on your internet. Your Facebook. Nobody 
their right state of mind is going to let somebody speak nasty about them on their own stuff. You don't do it either. You block. You block people. You do the same damn thing. Because you don't like they, the, the, the truth. They're telling the truth. You don't even support alternative versions of Facebook and Instagram. You don't even support it. You don't even ask your leaders. Now here your leadership, people like Wesley Muhammad just got his channel terminated. The original Nation of Islam channels was terminated. Cynthia G was terminated. A lot of folks be terminated. You would think that they would take their talent to a black version of Facebook or YouTube and help build that. They don't do that uh, because, because, see, our ice is not cold enough. Everything starts small. And you build yourself from, but they don't want to do that because I want my money, I want my fame, I want my fortune now. But you building a nation. I'm building a nation within a nation. How do you think nations get started, sir? How do you think nations get started, man? They get started small. They start off as small tribes. And people from other places might join. And they start building themselves up. The United States of America was founded by 200 people, the, the survivors. More than 200 came here, but it was 200 people that created all this. You want it when it's created. You don't want to be part of the creation. That's too much damn work. That's too much sacrifice. 200 people survived, but a whole lot of them died. These people was doing so bad when they first got here, they had to turn to cannibalism. They don't talk about that. But according to, to their own writings that I found, that they wrote, some of these pilgrims, the people that first came here, they was doing so bad, uh, they turned to cannibalism. It was their friendship with the native people that helped them to survive. Big mistake. They didn't know. And the sad thing is, the native people here, they wasn't getting along like that. Fighting back and forth, whatever. Having their little conflicts. But for some reason, they want to be friends with these strange looking people that come off a boat. Mistake. If they attack them the way they was doing other native people, they wouldn't have lost all this. Same thing happened in Africa. They did the same thing. Same stuff. Beating, beating each other up. Killing each other. Then strange folks come out. Of That's history. That's not... <laughs> I did not write the history. That's what happened. And basically, you have the same attitude. You don't trust and you fight and you will kill a, a, a foundation of black American. Then you reach out to Africans and other folks or whatever, Arabs. you the same. You have the same mindset. Same thing. And you're going to get exactly what you deserve. What we want to talk about for a few minutes, we want to talk about the rally. I think it's Juneteenth this time. It was November last year, I believe, this rally for um, reparations led by 
foundational black American leader, Tariq Nasheed. We want to talk about that. So I want to, I want us to listen. I want us to listen to this promo video. I would play the promo video, but as you, as you know, these folks like the flag folks, whatever. So I'm not going to take the chance. I'm just going to play the audio. I'm just going to play the audio. And let and we want to listen to the promo video by our brother Tariq Nasheed. Okay, let's see. Let me pull this up real quick. Justice and reparations. That moment was etched into the records of our struggle. And now, brothers and sisters, we are going to return here to Washington, D.C., not merely just to reminisce, but to reignite our spirit of determination, to amplify our voices, and to reaffirm our commitment to the cause. Join me, Tariq Nasheed, here in Washington, D.C., at the Rally for Reparations, Juneteenth Celebration, at Freedom Plaza. We're going to have a vast array of phenomenal speakers, guests, leaders, and activists who's going to reignite that spirit of Majala that's within us and our lineage. You don't want to miss this event. Go to rallyforreparations.com. That's rallyforreparations.com. Come on down here to Washington, D.C. Be a part of history. Join me. Stand up for yourself, stand up for justice, stand up for your ancestors. Rallyforreparations.com. See you here. I want to play that one more time. I think I think I was having a little technical difficulties on this side. I want to play it. It's only a minute video. I want to play that again. Two years ago, we came here to Washington, D.C., shoulder to shoulder, with our voices raised in unison, demanding recognition, justice, and reparations. That moment was etched into the records of our struggle. And now, brothers and sisters, we are going to return here to Washington, D.C., not merely just to reminisce, but to reignite our spirit of determination, to amplify our voices, and to reaffirm our commitment to the cause. Join me, Tariq Nasheed, here in Washington, D.C., at the Rally for Reparations, Juneteenth Celebration, at Freedom Plaza. We're going to have a vast array of phenomenal speakers, guests, leaders, and activists who's going to reignite that spirit of Majala that's within us and our lineage. You don't want to miss this event. Go to rallyforreparations.com. That's rallyforreparations.com. Come on down here to Washington, D.C. Be a part of history. Join me. Stand up for yourself, stand up for justice, stand up for your ancestors. Rallyforreparations.com. See you here. All right. Uh, Let's, let's discuss this and get out of here this morning. <clears throat> we began our talk speaking about a brother, Brother J26 brought to my attention. A valid question. And it would, it would look bad upon me, and I should know better, but I guess it's just human nature. When we believe in something, we just have this natural tendency to defend ourselves. And see, I can confess, when the brother brought me the question, I became defensive. 
I can confess that. But at the same time, it was my responsibility to embrace that question. So I went out and did a little research to find out about what he was talking about because I'm ignorant. I don't know. So I really cannot speak upon what I do know what I have no experience in. I cannot, I'm not a plumber. I cannot talk to you about plumbing issues because I'm not a plumber. I don't know. I'm ignorant. There's nothing wrong saying I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. I think we're having technical difficulties on internet, uh, on uh, this channel. So if you could go to Angel Snup Nup 7 YouTube channel, you can keep up with us, or our Facebook, Reality's Tip on Earth Internet Ministry Facebook channel. I want to try to get through this here. It's, uh, never stop. It's StreamYard. I'm going to stop using StreamYard. It's giving me problems. We was talking about update. We was talking about updating. You would not want to drive the original car. So everything must be updated. Updating is supposed to be or should be to better to better a product. So these questions actually help us. It's an update. And it only makes the product better. What we don't know, now we know. Ooh, this technical stuff throw my throw my groove off. <clears throat> we should always we should have no problem with somebody asking us questions. We should have no problem with with uh with uh we should have no problem with what they call constructive criticism. That might be the problem, uh, return of the brother. That, that could be the problem that I don't have enough bandwidth for multiple fees. That's, that's probably, that might be the problem. Uh, I actually upgraded my internet. The, the internet speed is actually faster. So I, I really don't know. I think it's 300. My internet speed is 300. But sometimes it worked perfectly and sometimes it don't. Most of the majority of the time it works perfectly. Why you don't like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? Why you don't like uh, Corbyn? But there are those, there are those who actually, when you offer constructive criticism, when you offer your point of view on how you view something, oh, you a hater. You jealous.
That's what they say. I would try that uh, return of the brother. You a hater. You jealous. This is what I listened to this morning. This is what I listened to this morning. You don't know nothing about me. Because truth belongs to nobody. And I can learn from anybody. There's truths in here. I find the truth, I don't have to use the rest of it. And I can sit under that. And I have been sitting under that. It's not the solution. But I'm not a hater. I'm here to update Y'all talking stuff from 5,000 years ago. You talking stuff from 50 years ago. You keep talking about dead folks all the time. I'm here to debate, not debate, update us. You need an update. You're living in the past. Microsoft no longer supports Windows 7. You still running Windows 7. Microsoft no longer supports Windows 7. These things are no longer supported. You can hold on to your old DVD and, and your old uh, 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 VCR, whatever it is. You can hold on that to, till it's, until it stops working. This has stopped working. The things that we have, they stop working. And you holding on. We still holding on to these things. I know what I would have to do. See, the thing about this, I helped make this come true. I helped make this. I helped make this man become who he was, who he is. I helped him. So why should I hate, why should I be jealous about somebody? I am helped make them be who they are. Did they, have they helped me? Do they want to help me? No. That's what you're upset about. A person would be upset. When you help somebody become a millionaire, they don't, do, don't help you do nothing. But I'm not jealous. There was no internet. There was no social media to make this man who he became. Incredible. Incredible. Boy, this, this, uh, this is throwing me off this technical stuff. I'm watching the screen. It's messing me up here. But I don't see nothing wrong with Facebook. I don't see nothing wrong with uh, the others. Just the screen yard garbage. I wish I could switch it over real quick. So, it's messing my groove up. But I'm going to try to get through here. We're just going to have to re-upload at a, a later date a better version. Because I'm clearly, this one here is not... It's not working. It's, it's messing my groove up, though. Uh, I 
I listened to this this morning. And Susan Taylor, who is the editor of, or was the editor of Essence Magazine, a popular a popular magazine in the sole black foundational American community. She said in her remarks in 2010, this is 2010, she said in her remarks, she said, we're here and that's nice I'm paraphrasing. She said, what is the plan? What is the plan? There was no plan. Say, Savior's Day is just church revival. This is our big church revival for the, for the year. All those speakers. And this guy was singing. I'm like, damn, when he gonna stop singing? This guy sung for about 12 minutes. I'm like, what song lasts that long? Susan said, what is, what is, the, what is the plan, y'all? What, what, why we come here? What is the plan? What we gonna do? Unfortunately, there, there's nothing. There was nothing to offer. So you get you want to get angry at Angel Snuffin' Up Seven because I'm like Susan Taylor. What's what we gonna do? What's the what's the plan? The, nobody has a plan. Nobody's offering anything. So we're getting ready for this reparations rally for June 10th. And I left a comment on the video and I said, why are you still begging? And folks got all upset. We're not begging. We're making a demand. You're begging. I'm going to show you why you're begging. What did our brother Tariq say in his promo video? We're coming here to reignite. Why do you have to reignite? You have to reignite when the flame or the fuel has expired on a flame, some power source. The fire is no longer there. That's why you have to reignite because the fire has went out. So come to Washington, D.C. because our fire is out. Because they lit the fire in 2022, November, right? Now we want to come back two years later and reignite because between 2022 and 2024, the fire went out. So we try to, we got to reignite. We got to get the energy back. And the reason why the fire went out, because there was no vision, there was no plan that created substance the fuel to keep the fire burning so the fire went out. So now you got to reignite. We are here, according to Tariq Nasheed, he says, we're here to celebrate. What are you celebrating when your fire went out, sir? Aren't these valid questions? You said that you're here to re reignite. So what are you celebrating? There's nothing to celebrate when your fire go out because you, you produce nothing. 
Nothing of substance was gained, sir, ma'am. That's not my fault. You said you got to come here and help us reignite. That means start the fire again. Because your fire went out. Because your fire, it produced nothing. He did not say in the promotional video, we got a plan for you. Susan Taylor said, Susan Taylor said in 2010, what's the plan? What's the vision? What you got? There is no plan. There is no vision. He said, come here to speakers. We had speakers in 2010. They produced nothing. The only thing they did was speak. That's all a speaker know how to do. I'm here to speak. They did not produce nothing of substance. That's why you are here. In 2024, you have to reignite the fire. There was, because the fire went out way back in 2010. You trying to copy this. You have not updated. The fire was out in 2010. There's nothing going on. That's not Angel Snup Nup 7 fault. You're doing a small version of the Million Man March. You can put all these other little things together. They don't compare to the Million Man March. The Million Man March ignite the fire and the fire went out. It produced nothing. That's why in 2024, Tariq Nasheed, who probably was, I, I don't know how old he was, 16, 17, or whatever, years old, whatever, I don't know, 1995. Now he has to reignite because what they done did not catch fire. So now we got to reignite because there was no plan. There was no vision. The only thing they had and the only thing you got is speakers. And the only thing a speaker know how to do is speak. I know there are some who get angry and upset. It don't make no difference. You get angry and upset all that you want to. You can't debunk. You cannot, you cannot debunk. You cannot refute nothing I'm saying. It's not your fault. We had nothing in 1995. We had nothing in 2010. We had nothing. So the only thing we know how to do is speak. And ignite a fire that's going to burn out. And people, as always, have their own little personal successes. But that's all you're going to get. You get nothing that's going to ignite the masses to make the people want to stand up for themselves. Tariq Nasheed can't stand for the people. The people have to be want to stand up for themselves. You can't help nobody unless they want to help themselves. If the masses of the people themselves don't want to be helped, there's nothing you can do even if you ignite the fire because it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough flame. But this was the fear of J. Edgar Hoover on the Cointel Pro. They had a fear or he had a fear of this black messiah that could reignite, inspire the masses. This was the fear. A fear because they don't want us to do any better want us to be on this level. So I'm saying that you're begging. I'm saying that you beg. I'm going to show you that you beg. Because the reparations movement started 
almost as soon as our ancestors came off the slave plantation. There are reparations organizations been around longer than Tariq Machine, longer than um, Yvette Car uh, Carnell, whatever her name is, and, and Tone Talks. They ain't been to court. You ain't been to court. You have reparations organizations. They've been to court. They, they have way more knowledge. In fact, see, you should be helping them. But see, everybody's out to get the praise. Everybody's out to get the glory. These older organizations have way more experience and actually have gained way more than Tariq Nasheed and th these other folks. These youngsters. And they've gotten nowhere ever since our ancestors came off the slave plantation. I'm going to show you why you begging now. Because we've been asking and we've been demanding. They've been in court over this. Before you was born. Before you was born, they've been in court. They've already been fighting this fight. Asking. Make a demand. We're not going to vote. They don't care if you don't vote or not. They was doing everything they could to keep you from voting. If you don't want to vote now that you have the right to vote and can, they don't give a damn. That's good for them. You're only shutting yourself out. And if you really understood the power of your vote, you wouldn't even say that. But see, your vote is, is unorganized. And you don't even know what you're voting for. Because you have no plan. You have no vision. You don't have no agenda. Sister Susan Taylor said, what is the plan? You don't have none. You don't have a plan. You become a beggar. I'm going to show you why you're a beggar. Very simple. You're a beggar. You're a beggar when a child want a cookie. First step, you ask mama. Mama, can I have a cookie? No, you cannot have a cookie. You're, you're asking at this point. And she keep telling you no. Then you begin to lower yourself. Because you know what the answer going to be. Mama, can I have a cookie? Can I have a cookie? Now you begging. Because you already know the answer is no. Now you become a beggar. Over 100 years have gone by. These folks have said no. What was it last year or the year before last? They had this little talk session with Bernie Sanders and some, some of these other creeps in the Congress or whatever, Democrats. And they told you in your face. No. They're not interested. They're not, not, they're not interested. They said no. So to continue to beg these folks, because that's what you're doing, you're begging because you already know the answer is no. So what is the ultimate step? What is the line that you begin to cross? The child waits until mama leaves the room. Then the child steal the cookie. The child begins to take the situation in their hands. Some of these suckers, they condemn Hamas. But I'm very sure the Palestinian people ask Israel for this and ask Israel for that. And it fell on deaf ears. So now, October 7th happens. Now, now you hear. 
You ain't no different. Somebody asks you, can I have five dollars? You say, you a bum, get out of my face. So then they start begging you for five dollars. Hey, bro, come on, man. I really need, can I have a five dollar? No, go away, you a bum. Get, get, go get a job. Then the last step, okay, I'm pulling out this pistol. I need five dollars. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> here, here, here you go. Matter of fact, I want more than five dollars. Give me everything you got. So these are the these are the, the points that we make. We go from asking, which we have been doing for over 100 years, now you are begging. So the next step is you're going to have to take things into your own hands some kind of way because these people are not giving you anything. The average Caucasian person don't give a damn about your struggle. Why I got to pay? Why I got to pay them black folks for reparation? Y'all ain't never been no slaves. That's the same old dumbass garbage that you hear all the time. And your African brothers and your brothers and sisters from the islands, they join the rhetoric because they know they can't get no, no reparation. Yes, why do you... Why do you, you should work hard and you did, you was not a slave. You was not a slave. This dumb thinking. Y'all, y'all didn't suffer in no slavery. Which reparations is more than slavery. Reparations is also Jim Crow. The black codes. We as a people suffer. But even so, but they support the war in Ukraine. They don't mind millions and millions and billions of dollars going to Ukraine. They don't mind millions and billions of dollars going to Israel so they can so folks can kill each other. They don't mind it. I'd rather kill thousands, thousands, millions of people than give these Negroes, these foundational black Americans, a damn dime. This is who you're dealing with. This is the reality of things. So why do you want to keep embarrassing yourself, embarrassing us as a people with this, going to watch this march, the Million Man March? Two million people participated. Didn't change a damn thing. You don't take your little few thousand. What is it supposed to do? The Million Man March, the part actually left Washington, D.C. They actually, a lot of them actually left. They don't even leave when you come. They don't even leave. You keep asking these folks that's not going to give you nothing for reparation. You are a beggar. These folks don't want to give you anything. You didn't suffer but they don't mind funding these wars. They don't mind giving all these people that's coming across the border, they don't mind giving them shelter and taking care of them and giving you a dime. You need to read, you need to look at your behavior anything. Reparations go to their descendants. They want to play the nut role, the stupid role. When you are in a car accident and you die in the car accident, you can't get nothing, you're dead. So the benefits go to your children, go to your descendants. They like playing the stupid role on us. So of course reparations go to the descendants. It goes to the children of those who this harm was caused. Reparations still going to the descendants of Holocaust victims. They wasn't in no Holocaust. The Holocaust ended way back in the 1940s. A lot of the people that actually suffered in the Holocaust are gone. But the descendants are still getting reparation. Here we are. We're the descendants of people 
generations go to us because we are their descendants. They can't get anything. They're gone. They're dead. Except when you talk about Jim Crow. They don't want to talk about Jim Crow because a whole lot of, of us, including myself, that suffered Jim Crow. We are alive and well. They don't want to talk about Jim Crow. They don't want to put, they don't want to talk about reparations for Jim Crow. They always want to play this childish. This is who you're dealing with. This is what you're dealing with. So I'm telling you, you don't have to beg no more. We don't have, we don't have tanks. We don't have AK-47s. We don't have grenade launchers. We don't have a jet plane. We don't have, the only thing we have is our brain. I'm not a hater of nobody. But I'm not a preacher. I'm a revolutionary. I'm a liberator. I want us, once we start the fire, you got to keep that fire burning. You got to keep it going. You shouldn't have to reignite anything. If we are suffering the way you claim, how can your fire go out? The people, the masses can see themselves if we do this. This is how we benefit. Reignite the people. Something that the people themselves can attach themselves to. It has to produce a benefit. If it does not produce a benefit, if it does, it does not present, produce substance, then you always gonna keep have to reignite. The money and the time that people are wasting doing this and marches you can invest in things that can actually produce for you we don't have to we don't have to have marches anymore you have the internet we can talk we can talk you do it all the time you can talk on these live streams and then the money that we save not using gas and going places at airfare, you can take those funds and put it into your vision so that your vision can produce. But you have nothing. So the only thing that what we're doing, the only thing that we're doing is having a church revival. We're having a church revival. And if you want to have a church revival, then so be it. But don't expect a church revival because this is not Nat Turner. You're not doing anything on, on the Nat Turner level. So the only thing a church can do is produce pretty speeches. And you make yourself look bad because you become a beggar. Can I? Can I have it? You're not making a demand. Because when you make a demand, you got to have power and influence. See, when a child begs mama for a cookie, that child has no power, no influence. Now, if mama knew that that child was going to go out and break her car window that made a threat, it'll be a different ball game. Because mama have to say, damn, do I gotta, I gotta go through all that? I just get, just get a child a cookie, let him go on about his way. There's no consequences 
for these people to tell us, I ain't giving you a damn thing. Get out the hell out of my face. There's no consequence. So why should they give you a cookie? There's no consequence. So you are begging. You're a begging ass child. Mama, can I have a cookie, please? Mama, can I? And she done told you forever. No, you ain't getting no cookie. But see, You got to use your brain. The Mississippi campaign. And you don't want to tell your enemy everything that you want to do. That You don't want to do that either. You don't want to make things easy for them. Hamas didn't go around telling Israel, well, we're going to hit y'all on October the 7th. They didn't do that. You don't tell folks what you're doing. But then again, the Mississippi campaign, the wisdom behind it really is awesome because everything that you're doing is legal. You're not doing nothing outside that's not legal. You're just expressing and taking advantage of the tools that you are, have been given as a citizen of this nation. No more, no less. But you don't know how to do that. Because you're, you're outdated. Your mind is focused on some delusional way of looking at things from 1930, what they did in ancient Egypt and all this other nonsense. Or you're waiting for the mother plane. Woo! Oh, oh, there it is. Look. See, y'all, I'm going on the mother plane. You... You are not invited to the mother plane. But I was a Muslim. You should have stayed a Muslim. You should have stayed a Muslim. Woo! We're not picking Talik up. Woo! <laughs> Woo! No mother plane for you. Woo! No ticket for you, sir. Woo! We got to stop it. We got to stop it. Except reality, my friend, is much easier. So, you know, if I wanted money, if I wanted all this praise and stuff, I know I could dilute my message. I know exactly what not to say so that you would accept me. And, I, and you would give me a whole lot of cash out because... I'm saying what you want to say. Oh, yeah. My, I have cash apps going, you know, every day. I, I know what to do. That's, that's not right. That's not right. I wouldn't feel good. My uncle wanted me to do that. I, can, I don't feel good. I'm not. You deserve better. But you got to want it. You don't want it because you're comfortable in the cesspool. So you feel good going to Washington, D.C. for the Million Man March, the rally for reparations in uh, 2024. That's all you want. You just want to feel good. You're not really serious about your situation. Let's get together, put our money together, and let's go to Egypt and ride a camel. That helps our situation. I don't know how it do, but that helps our situation in America. I don't know how it, it does. You really don't want to change your condition. So until the people want to change the condition, including these black and the black folk, that's why they don't like Angel Snuff Number Seven, because you know that I know that you're not real. All that hooping and hollering, pumping out your chest and Black power, that don't mean nothing. I've been around that garbage for over 40 some years. So, and you're still in the exact 
Same position. Matter of fact, you're going backwards. And you're going to find yourself on a damn slave plantation. If not you, that's where your children, that's where your children is going. And the word children is going to be part of their language. I hope they're going to be doing, they're going to be doing the same thing our ancestors said was talking about 400 years, 400 years ago. I want better for my children. We was doing better until this generation dropped the damn ball because they think they know it all. Don't have a pot to piss in. Waiting on spaceships. Begging. Begging people that's not going to give you nothing. But you get a little hope because you have a, a little town in Illinois. You have, uh, I think the state of California talking about giving some kind of reparation. And so that make you feel... One day we gonna make it. We shall overcome. And this is the sick thing. This is the sick thing about it. Many of you that talk about reparation, you don't give a damn about your ancestors. You talk about reparation because you hope in your lifetime that you can get some money. You become an instant millionaire. You don't give a damn about no reparation. You don't give a damn about no ancestor. You don't care. And that's the reality of it. I know the people that come to my channel and was talking about reparations, they talk about how they're going to spend their money. You don't even have no money. But they talk about, I'm going to go to Africa and buy all this land and what they're going to do with their money. Reparations is supposed to be to repair the harm caused by a people. Not for you to, to give all the damn money back to the people that you got it from. Buying their houses. Buying their cars. You giving it right back to the people that you got it from. What sense do that make? And you do nothing for yourself. Are they going to speak on that? Are they going to speak on their own greed? Are they going to tell the people at the reparations rally? Are they going to tell the people, are you here because you think that you're going to get Pay, and you want to buy, you think that you want to live by Jay-Z and Beyonce? Is that what this is all about? It's a good thing these people tell you no. You need to be told no. But I guarantee you this. If you pull off the vision of what we call the Mississippi campaign, I guarantee you, when you talk as a state to the government, and see, this is the thing about it. Nobody don't even have to know because you don't put yourself in a position where the government, you can have a deal with the government about reparation and the country don't even really, don't even know. Because you're in that position. You are in a position where you just operate as a state. No, they, they don't know. They don't know what's happening. So there's nothing for the public to argue about. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Woo! We're not smart at all. We're not smart. We're, you, got supreme, you got supreme wisdom. Where the hell is it? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me, you're not a robot. You can think for yourself. So if I'm acting upon the word of Elijah Muhammad, what you angry at me for? That's what produced the reality still because Elijah Muhammad told me I'm not a robot. I'm not a robot to the United States government. I'm not a, ro a robot to your ass. He did not say in the in the fruit of Islam booklet. He did not exclude himself. He did not say this this don't include me. I'm a something is wrong with Malcolm. Malcolm was only doing what he's supposed to do because that's how what he was taught. 
But when the leadership go in violation, they can do anything they want to. But if it was a, the regular brother in the ranks, oh, let's punish him. Uh, let's, let's get him 90 days. Oh, give it to him. Oh, but not the leader. So that makes you a zombie. That makes you a slave. So I know. So I know you would bend over as a man. You would give another man your booty because he's a leader. I know you would because that's your thought. You, because you feel as though you want to get close to him. You would bend over as a man and give another man your booty. That's how you think. Or would that finally open up your eyes? Nobody is be nobody's supposed to be above the law. The fruit of Islam should have looked at it, looked at it because see, all this was a distraction. And everybody go to trial. But see, folks don't want to go to trial because all the information, all the skeletons in the closet come out. Let's kill Malcolm. Don't have to worry about it no more. This won't be an issue no more. And now the man is dead. So it really don't make any difference now. Our next live stream, we talk about niggas. How niggas bring things down. Malcolm said it was niggas that destroyed the nation of Islam. And you look at all this. And you think the nation of Islam hasn't been destroyed. You, you watch this video, all the thousands of people dressed up in their, in their Sunday best and, and God going to do this and the wheel came down. I seen it. I had a dream. <laughs> a space version of I had a dream. I had a dream that, the, that I was on the mother plane. I, they took me up and I saw Elijah Muhammad. I had a dream. <laughs> That's acceptable to you. But you don't want to hear the question. Sister Susan Taylor said, what's the plan? Let's look at the plan. Give the people the plan. Let's see if it worked. These suckers don't even want to talk about, don't even want to, I'm not talking about, we're not talking about debating over Jesus. We're not debating over Prophet Muhammad. Did he, cut the moon in half with a sword. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a plan that will liberate the masses. Discuss that. Talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. They want to keep you marked. They've been telling you for over 100 years. I'm not giving you nothing. Even if you deserve it. Come and take it. Then you have these, these, these tough Negroes on YouTube talking about that tough stuff. Come and take it. They haven't tried to take it. You ain't gonna take it. Sir, I'm making a demand, sir. Give me my rubber license, sir. It's truly embarrassing. That's not my fault. You tolerate that and you accept that. Because the bottom line is you're comfortable. You just want to feel like you've done something. Well, I, I went to the reparations for rally June 10th. I, I did my part, sir. I, I'm finna go get, get my kids and my dog Scruffy. We going to Disney, Disneyland, sir. <laughs> And watch, watch Tariq Nasheed video as you go to Disneyland. It's all a joke. 
That's why they don't like Angels number no. 7. I'm too old for jokes. I spent my youth following my elders. I denied my own wants for the struggle following my elders. Produce nothing. You want to continue to be that way? That's why the people can't get ignited. That's why the people cannot get inspired. Because you got to be able to produce something that they can see. Hey, I, I see that. I, I want to do that. I want to be part of that. Look what they're doing. Look, look, it's going, it's going. The fire getting bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. You're not producing anything except speakers, preaching, singing, marching. <laughs> I can't do it no more. Been there, done that. Stop embarrassing yourself. So I'm not hating nobody. I'm just asking you, it's a better way. You got to update. It's a better way to do things. Microsoft no longer supports Windows 7. This behavior is no longer supported. Especially with the mindset that our people have. And see, this is another thing. You don't even understand the people that you're trying to talk, that you're talking to. You really don't understand them like that. You really don't even understand. This is not 1930. This is not 1950. This is not 1980. This is not even 1985. But then again, you're not serious anyway. You're not serious. That's why you don't care. You just want to pretend like you've done something. And it really don't cost you nothing. If you really had to sacrifice, if you really had to suffer, it would be a whole different ball game. Most of these people that go to Savior's Day, reparations rally, they can afford it. No big deal. They're not sacrificing nothing. They go into the, to, to the nice hotel. They got a nice car, SUV to drive. It's all a, it's all a bunch of baloney. When you're talking, when you run a business, the most expense that we have running a business is labor costs, human labor costs. And we got all this labor. We got all these people out here that would participate, but you don't know how to take advantage of nothing. And they probably will work hard when they understand that your condition is going to change greatly. So, you can keep playing this game if you want to. That's why they don't mess with Angel Slump number seven. Because this is not a game for me. I don't care about no fancy house. I don't care about YouTube views, subscribers. I don't care about all the, your, your money. and all. I don't give a damn about all that. I don't care. I don't care about all that. that. A person cannot rise higher than his people. That's what I'm told. So if we are still considered the N-word in this country, it don't make no difference how fancy, wherever, the fame, money, whatever you get, it don't make any difference. You still, you think these people, you think Bob Johnson, you think Oprah, you think Will Smith, you think all our people, that, uh, LeBron, you think, you think they don't know? They steal the N-word. They know. They hide behind their money. They hide behind their little thing. But but the reality, they somebody always getting the reality check. And they show them, you ain't know you still don't give them what you got. 
in this country, you steal the N-word. But I guarantee you, you pull this vision off called Operation Exodus Mississippi Camp. You do that. And it don't make no difference what people call you. Like y'all said, because <laughs> you getting paid and you got power and you got influence. So I don't give a damn what you do in Nevada. I don't give a damn what you do in New York. But when you come here, do that here. You see what you're going to get from the N-word. <laughs> see it. If only you could see it. The power that you're going to get. Whether they like it or not. Woo! I'm out of here, y'all. I'm out of here. I hope they forgive. Hope they forgive me. And give me my seat back on the <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> we out of here. Um, we might be back later tonight and do our other uh, live stream. Malcolm said the reason why the nation was destroyed was because of the N-word. And I want to talk about that. Some recent events that happened you know, to some of our brothers here. And we should learn from these things. And we don't never have to, we don't have to forget. But sometimes as adults, things aren't that, aren't that serious. Because we are going to have to do this. And we, and we need each other, whether we like it or not. You don't have to like me. But if you really want to change some stuff, we we need each other. Now, you don't need me to be a speaker. You don't need me to march and go to conferences and, conferences and debates. No, you, you don't need me. But if you want to, for us to change as a people, then the people we must change. We all must participate. We all, you don't have to like nobody. It's not about liking. This is another thing. What is this? You don't have to like me. I don't have to like you. But you should like liberation. You should like independence. You should like power. You should like respect for yourself. You should like a better future for your children. And you're not going to get that unless we work together so that we can get the we to move as one. One direction, one purpose, one goal, one vision, and move forward. You can't get that done. Just keep enjoying the slavery that we all enjoy. <laughs> We're out of here, y'all. Thank you for listening. Thank my nephew for joining us in the live stream earlier. You know, we're too busy. He's too busy to probably listen to the whole thing. That's too long. You know? We don't like to hear truth like that. Because truth means responsibility. Truth, truth means accountability. And like I said, we're comfortable in the, in the mess. So we don't want to hear somebody, you ain't my mama, you ain't my daddy. The folks don't want to be responsible for nothing. Put all the blame on Tariq Nasheed. Put all the blame on Farrakhan. Put all the blame on Snup Nup. Just put all the blame. We don't want to hold ourselves accountable or responsible for anything. Shout out to Return to the Brother. I, we still have, I guess we still have a love-hate relationship, but shout out to Return to the Brother. <laughs> of course, Dickens of Reality. All those who are in the clouds, those, those uh, on uh, Facebook, I don't, I don't do anything on Instagram no more. I just, no kind of action on Instagram. 
our listeners on Instagram, I mean uh, Facebook, really they're the same company, but I can't I can't get nothing going on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I much appreciate it. I enjoyed this talk. This uh, technical difficulty thing threw my lecture off, but I was able to try to work through it. I apologize for the technical difficulties. And when I re-upload this video, I'm going to re-upload from Facebook or the, on my Angel Snuff Number 7 channel because I didn't see they was being affected. Only StreamYard. So I'm going to stop using StreamYard. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go to RestStream or just use regular, uh, regular YouTube, but you cannot, you cannot put, uh, when you use regular YouTube, you cannot put, you know, like the promotional video. You can't, you can't, you cannot do, you can't do nothing except make a video on regular YouTube. We might do that. I think Black Sun started doing that. He just started using regular YouTube. I think that's what we're going to do too. We're just going to use regular YouTube and leave this, leave these streaming, this garbage stream yard and stuff alone. So on that note, we out of here. As our ancestor, Don Cornelius used to always say as a party, we wish you love, peace, and so we are already 5,000.